Hello and welcome. Today I'm in the new tier 9 French battleship, the Alsace. She is still a work in progress. Initially I wanted to make a joke about her being a German battleship, however I decided against it because that's a bit rude. So instead we will take a moment to praise Jesus. Oh hey look Shimakaza, what torpedoes, and my damage control party is on cooldown. This is an excellent time to uh, get some torpedo hits on me, right? Because it does seem like those torpedoes are going to hit me, so Please don't flood me, okay? Please? Please? Please no flooding, 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 please no flooding. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, we're fine. Yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. I knew that was going to happen. It was calculated, okay? I knew it. I just knew it. Okay, joking aside, uh, this is the actual match I want to show you. Uh, later I'll show th I'll show her stats in part as well. So it's a match on the map uh, Okinawa, where um, teams like going to into the A cap, but hopefully not in this game. Uh, the Elsass is a French battleship, as you have already guessed, I imagine. She has 12 guns. Yes, 12 guns at tier 9. However, they are 380 millimeters. She also gets a speed boost. And she gets a float plane, which is something that the France doesn't get, that is the tier 10 French battleship. I really like float planes because it helps you with spotting. The speed boost is normal, she is slightly faster than the France, she has a fairly decent reload. However, the 380mm caliber guns means that against some of the higher tier cruisers it's not quite as nice. However, as you saw, I hit 6 of those shells for a citadel plus 5 over penetrations on that Pensacola. Unfortunately, my team has still not somehow managed to take her out. I don't know why not, but it happens. So in this match I'm gonna try doing a um, strategy I like doing in ranked battles. That is, I am going to go to the side of the enemy team. The idea is that if my team goes A and B, or at least the bulk of my team goes A and B and they start pushing into it, I will be on the side so that if the enemy team angles towards my team, you know, in the B cap, they will be showing me broadside, kind of like that Iowa right now, although I don't think that he is... Uh, I think he just ran aground by accident. Hopefully I'll get a nice shot on her. Another thing is that maybe I will pull off like a destroyer or something that will try chasing me and then I will um, turn around and run and avoid things, etc. You know, make the game interesting. I think the French battleships are actually very good at this strategy because, you know, they are fast and you need a fast battleship to do these kinds of things. Plus, you also need to be fairly tanky against, um, you know, battleships. Of course, unfortunately, the French battleships aren't very good against um, cruiser HE spam because they are 32 millimeters all over, including the Alsace. Uh, this unfortunately means that cruisers can be quite dangerous. However, you can also be dangerous to cruisers. Although the uh, Alsace's 380mm caliber guns make it slightly more difficult against ships like um, Des Moines and Hindenburg and uh, Rune, for instance. However, against ships like Pensacola, it's not really a problem. I just don't want to go in here hard because there is clearly a destroyer in the sea cap, you know, since they have the sea cap. And I don't really want to contest against torpedoes when there are so many other ships over there. The Alsace does have a lot less range than the many of the other French battleships. Uh, for instance, the Richelieu has like 24.8, no, 25.3 kilometer range. The Gascon has like 24 kilometer, no, something, some similar amount of range, right? Although I did hear that they are going to change it a little bit, uh, to a little bit lower. And the France has uh, 26 kilometer range, but the Alsace is stuck with 20.3. But I do like the Alsace a lot. In fact, initially I liked the I liked her as the most out of all the French battleships, even more than the France. However, now it's slowly starting to change uh, because I really like the 431 mm caliber guns on her. I do wish that the uh, France were faster than the uh, as fast as the Alsace. That would be nice. In fact, I really really like the Alsace. I think she's going to be one of the stronger tier nine battleships too. Although her HP pool isn't the greatest, but she does have, you know, again, 12 guns. Plus she gets secondaries that she can use at 20.6 kilometers, and she has quite decent anti-air. And again, speed boost is really nice, not really for the top speed, although that is also great. 
but you can stop and you know speed up again stop and speed up again a lot faster because of speed boost unfortunately because the Alsace's um, HP pool isn't quite as high her heal isn't as strong either that is like a that is one of the bigger downsides on her however she also gets better concealment uh, than the France that is so and she is fairly stealthy at I think 12.6 kilometers so you know that's quite nice I don't go a secondary build although you can to get up to 10.6 kilometer and it's full HE secondaries but I don't think it's worth it because in my experience I don't feel like French battleships are the close range battleship fighters like you would expect in a German battleship like a Grosse Kurfürst because the difference is that your 32 millimeters of armor everywhere makes you so vulnerable to cruisers that if you start approaching enemies you will just take such a large amount of damage that you will just go down really quickly, a lot quicker than the German ones. Although the ship is very, fairly well protected against AP citadels, it can still take a large amount of damage and wow, that was 22,000 damage. I actually managed to hit 10 out of my 12 shells on that Friedrich der Grosse from 19 kilometers. I will say though that don't expect that. Don't expect these kinds of shots because... Uh, the dispersion on the French battleships is not very good. Uh, the numbers are quite high. However, to me it feels like the penetration on the AP shells is fairly good, which means that many of the AP shells that actually do hit seem to deal a lot of damage. But this might also be a bit of confirmation bias on my end because I don't know the specific numbers. Unfortunately, I managed to miss on the Iowa. Oh, and the shell speed feels also pretty good. Okay, so at this point I am pushing a bit too far into my team now, so the angle that I wanted to go on the side right, the so-called flanking maneuver, uh, I guess I have to turn around again to go back on the flank at least. I did hear, or there have been some speculation that some people have thought that this is what Wargaming wanted from the French battleships, and if it is, I think they will get it, because it's a very fairly good strategy. Although it's very important to uh, make sure you don't get taken out if you do this. And it's very easy to overextend. Because, uh, you know, you don't know where the enemy destroyers are in this kind of a situation. And you are fairly vulnerable. Oh, another aspect that uh, makes it work out as a French battleship is that your anti-air is fairly good. The Alsace's anti-air is mostly in dual purpose. So it's not quite as great as the uh, France because, you know, the all-purpose anti-air is usually quite limited because of skills like manual anti-air. And wow, I actually got the citadel from this angle. That's, wow, that's surprising. I didn't think that, yeah, that that's a weird citadel. But I'll take it. So mini looking at the minimap, the Harakaze it could be somewhere around me. I have to be somewhat wary of that one. And as you can see, I'm going at a nice 33 knots, but I am maneuvering, so, you know, the speed isn't the maximum speed. I believe you can get to, like, 36 knots. I don't remember if that is with or without the flag. So, she is definitely fast. And, oh, there's the Harakaze. I don't think she wanted to get spotted there, but, well, the plane did it for me. And I'm gonna get a nice shot on her. Hopefully, anyway. And I managed to avoid some of the torpedoes anyway. Probably the rest, too. Although even if I take one or two, it, it'll be fine. Okay, that Missouri is actually quite close to me. Actually, that's a good question. Would I prefer the Missouri or the Alsace? I think that's a difficult question. I, I do think that the Missouri is probably a better ship. Number one reason just being that she has radar. But in terms of fighting power, I think I would pick the Alsace. At least against other battleships, because your HE is still respectable, uh, meaning you can do all kinds of uh, things against one against other battleships, even if they go bow on. AP, I suppose it depends. Like if they're showing broadside like this, you can see that it's very very effective. However, against cruisers, I don't know. Depends on the cruiser, I suppose. If it's an Ibuki, that's no problem. But if it's like, uh, like I mentioned, a rune. That might be a bit of an issue because she can angle so well against you. 
Okay, so the Harakaze is a bit of a problem now. Because I do want to go back to where I was, since we aren't doing that well. We have lost five ships. The enemy team has only lost four, and they are actually contesting at least B. So this game is still completely wide open. And besides, they still have two Missouris left. Wow, you, you just saw the amazing dispersion on some of the French battleships. So we saw earlier a good version where I hit 10 out of 12 shells at 12 at 19 kilometers and now none of those shells hit with some massive dispersion. And this is kind of what I mean by a cruiser could rush you. Okay, I need to start turning in because the, I don't know where the Harakaza is and she might be torpedoing me again. But remember that Ibuki isn't actually that great of a... Uh, Ibuki isn't... I don't think the Ibuki has like 27 millimeters of armor somewhere. So in that case, the Ibuki doesn't actually have the armor to even deflect many of the shells. However, you know, because of the angling and the small narrow profile, I still can't hit her well. So this can be quite dangerous because if she uh, gets to torpedo me, I might just get taken out. I'm thinking of taking the shot soon, but I'm waiting for her to turn. And I want the better shot. However, unfortunately I didn't quite get it, because she probably is waiting for me to also take my shot before showing broadside and uh, torpedoing me. I don't damage on my torpedoes because I'm afraid I might get torped by the Ibuki, but I think it's okay now to use it because she's gone. Goodbye Ibuki. Tough luck on that one, and I spot the Harakaze yet again. I really like float planes. I wish the uh, France got the float plane, but she has a helicopter pad, so I imagine that, uh, you know, the thinking would have gone, hey, we have a helicopter pad, why would we need float planes? But unfortunately, in the game, we don't have helicopters. The Harakaza was spotted by the Yugumo. Unfortunately, uh, Missouri took a very nice shot on our Yugumo and she got taken out. So now there is only. The Harakaza is still alive, and unfortunately, we don't have any destroyers. They have three destroyers, in fact. But she was spotted for a moment, so I'll take a shot based on that information. And if I hit like two, I think she's gone. And I hit two and she is gone. Excellent! That was a very nice shot. I really didn't expect it to work, but it did. However, now the enemy team has the B-cap and we are only slightly ahead in points. In terms of ships, it's equal right now, but they do have two destroyers and we don't have any. And it's a Z-46 plus an Asashio, and Asashio is like um, like a Kagero basically, the tier 8 Kagero. And that means that she still has usable torpedoes. Unfortunately right now I can't have, I can't torpedo anything. However right now, this is why I think concealment is so versatile. Right now, I'm unspotted, right? This means that there is no destroyer. None of the enemy destroyers are anywhere near the sea cap. Even the, because you know. You can see on the minimap that my 12.6 kilometers were it covered too, and I was unspotted before firing. Now, if I get spotted after my concealment drops back down, you know, the, when you fire your guns, your concealment goes to your maximum range. However, once I stop firing, I should have a few seconds in between there, and I would see if a destroyer has come around here. And unfortunately, our Baltimore was taken out by the enemy Missouri. There is a York coming, that is a good target. Um, hopefully we'll be able to take her out. And I am spotted so I know that there is a destroyer somewhere around here. She's probably coming to torpedo either me or our Missouri. And that means I will have to pay attention to that. The enemy team has taken uh, almost a hundred points lead at this point. Kinda bad for us but I think we can still pull it back. Again the uh, flanking position works. Although I don't know if you would consider this a flanking position, let me know in the comments. Is this a flanking position? Because I'm more or less like on the side. We don't know where the destroyer is that's coming in this direction, so... I'm just guessing to try to avoid those torpedoes. I'm just playing with my speed to, you know, hopefully throw off the torpedo prediction of the uh, destroyer. Probably it's the Z-46 that came back. Because she was the closest destroyer, right? Okay, so torpedoes incoming. Mm, can I avoid some of these? Come on. No. 
Alsace apparently is a bit too wide. But we got the arc though, so next target is probably that mystery. I'm still okay at 29,000 HP. It might be a decent idea to use a heal here. Not because it's a, it's going to be a full heal, but because I'm not sure if I will have enough time to use both of the heals if I wait too long here. We are taking the sea cap. Even if we don't get it, we are at least contesting it. However, we are pretty much fish in a barrel for the... Uh, Z46 or the Asashia to Torpedo. It's either or at this point, I think. At least I am not quite sure which one. I would imagine it's the Z46 considering her latest known position. But I can't be 100%. Oh, and there's the smoke screen. And somebody is firing at me. Wait, is that five guns? It seemed like it. I switched to HE because the Missouri is angled. The HE is still useful on this ship. Because again, first of all, you get 12 guns. Second of all, you still get decent fire chance with 12 guns. That's quite something. And I don't want to get out of this cap zone, so I'll just start slowing down. Even though I just got decapped, it's still important. And there are the torpedoes meant for the Missouri, it seems. I managed to either avoid them or they just weren't aimed at me at all. Okay. I think we'll be able to take out this Missouri in a moment. She has 4000 HP and she's burning. And oh, I we managed to actually cap this right before I got hit by the Missouri in the A cap. That's good for us. Although we only have four ships left, but at least they will only have four ships left in a second as well. And goodbye Missouri, taken out by our uh, Lion. However, the two destroyers can absolutely wreak havoc because we might just randomly take some torpedoes that just could end the game for one of us and that could swing enough points to give the enemy team quite an advantage. Plus we have a Miyoko fighting a Missouri. However, I do think that we will at least take this Izumo out since she is burning and I was firing Ichi earlier but I swapped AP because I thought I might have to uh, fight the destroyer. But it seems that she has left the uh, smoke screen. But we did take out the Missouri, or sorry, Izumo. And now I'll just turn and start heading for the B cap to defend it. Because I imagine one of the DDs is going to try to contest it soon. Armyoko is still fighting the Missouri. I am still spotted, which means that at least one of the destroyers is still around. I think it might be a good idea to tell my Missouri that she, he should watch out for the torpedo soon. Or at least... That's what I'm doing right now. Watch out for Z46, I assume. And there are the torpedoes already. And unfortunately, it seems I'm gonna take two as well. Since I'm gonna take two anyway, I'm gonna try getting them onto my main belt. So I take the least amount of damage. I don't think I managed to do that on one of them. As the as these were Asashia turfs, by the way, on the Missouri. And it might have been the Asashia that was with us all the time. I'm not sure, but I thought it was the Z46. I thought the Asashio was in the A cap, you know, based on where their last known positions are. But it turns out that's wrong. And I find this out by the fact that I complement the Z46. And the Z46 goes, well, that wasn't me. So, yeah, I guess I will complement the Asashio as well. Not that the Z46 doesn't deserve it, because it means that they did a nice switch over there. Which I wouldn't have known about otherwise. But it's not like this makes much of a difference anyway, because, uh, well, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's the Z46 in the AB cap or the Asashia. And there's the uh, Z46 torpedoes, and there we saw her for a brief moment. She's gonna probably smoke up, but it does mean that I don't have to be worried about Z46 torpedoes. I might have to be worried about, like, the last ditch effort of the Asashia torpedoes, but there's only 10 seconds to go, and, and I think we'll be fine. The problem is that if this point swing, uh, then the enemy team wins and our Miyoko is at uh, 118 HP. 118 HP. If that Miyoko had died, we would have lost this game. Luckily though, she didn't and we won instead. How nice, how nice. 198,000 damage, 4 ships sunk, 5 citadels, 2524 base XP, Wow, that Asashio and Missouri did really well. Actually, both of the Missouris did really well. Wow. The enemy team played actually quite well. 
In fact, it's necessary to compliment my misery as well, because it was necessary for him to also do decently, and Amioka and Algeria as well, because they somehow managed to stay alive. Both tier 7 cruisers. If either of them had been taken out, we would have lost the game. But they weren't. And we won. I like the Alsace. I think that she is a fun ship. One of the best of the French line. And she just plays well and nicely to me. I don't know what other people think of her, but I really enjoy her. I just really, really do. In fact, I kind of wish that the France were a bit more like the Alsace. Uh, at least as far as the float plane is concerned, right? And you know, the speed as well. So, let's take a look at the Alsace in port. I think that she's a good looking battleship and I kind of like her. Actually, I like her a lot. First, let's take a look at the upgrades and commander skills. I go for the usual stuff. So I go for the damage control system modifications because I don't want I want less fires and flooding and I'm not quite sure if steering gears is worth it. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I haven't really decided yet. 16.6 second rudder shift with 910 meter turning circle. I I'm I'm kind of unsure. And obviously I go for AA range because well battleships usually lack an anti-air range and this is still the case. Even though they have enough anti-air DPS plus AA range is just that useful because it also helps your teammates. I go for Concealment System Modification 1 because Detectability makes is probably one of the most versatile things you can get on any ship, basically. Because you can use it to surprise someone, you can use it to cap, you can use it to run away. You know, useful stuff all around. And obviously I go for Main Battery Modification 3 because everybody wants faster reload and the downside of worse turret traverse is kind of worth it. Okay, not even kind of, it really is worth it. Captain skill-wise, I go for the usual, priority target, expert marksman, superintendent, concealment expert, advanced firing training, adrenaline rush, and then basic survivability. The last three points are kind of up in the air, however, these, this does work well with the damage control system modification and the fire and flooding reduction flags. Because you get fires down to like, I don't know, what was it, 35, 37 seconds, something like that. I don't remember specifically. Uh, however, you could get something else, just make sure you don't... Don't take this skill. Survivability expert on a battleship is not worth it. It's only a few percentage points of HP extra. However, you're using up three entire points. It's not worth it. Don't do it. Skills I would recommend on this ship are advanced firing training, concealment expert, and as the usual, priority target. In fact, the priority target is so good that I might even want to make a video specifically on that skill. Expert marksman is something you might not want to take, might want to take, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I will definitely use it because I like having faster turret traverse, but some people are going to argue that it's not worth it. Okay, so let's take a look at the stats of the ship. Survivability, 74,700 HP, which should make her the lowest HP amount of any tier 9 battleship. However, it's just a few thousand H points of HP. Torpedo protection damage reduction, 45%, which should make it one of the best, not the best, but somewhere up there. So this is actually quite good in terms of torpedo protection. Artillery-wise, you have um, 12 guns, uh, 3 turrets, four, 4 barrels per turret. Uh, you get 380mm caliber guns. They are 26.4 second reload, 35.6 second, 180 degrees, which means that the turret traverse is fast, the reload is decently good, You fire that means you fire a lot of shells, and the HE at 5400 damage with 36% fire chance is okay, but I mostly just use the AP because the AP just feels like it has enough penetration. I haven't actually looked at the numbers there though, so I don't know. Because unfortunately the game doesn't tell us what the AP penetration numbers are. Uh, AP damage is 11,900, 11, uh, but this AP does have one big problem. You see, there are many cruisers at the higher tiers that have more armor than 380mm caliber guns can overmatch. This means that those cruisers could rush you and angle towards you, and you would have a hard time dealing a lot of damage to them. Of course, it's not very common, but it could happen. The France doesn't have this problem, and that's one of the reasons why I like the France. Initially, I liked the ship actually more than the France, like a lot more. However, the more I played the France, the more I started liking her, so, you know, it's kind of equal. Although, I think France even edges out an advantage in my book. Secondary-wise, she does have secondaries you could go for. She gets uh, 12 of these 100mm uh, caliber guns on one side and 12 on the other side. These are dual-purpose, so they also act as anti-air. They have a very fast reload at 2.8 seconds, and they cause quite many fires. 
You also get secondaries of these 152mm caliber guns. They have a 12% fire chance, but the reload rate is a lot lower. You get one at the front and two at the back of the ship. Main battery firing range is 20.3 kilometers. This makes the 265 meter dispersion quite bad, but you know, it's okay ish. It didn't feel that bad that you couldn't, you know, hit things at all. Anti air wise, this ship has 203 dual purpose anti air DPS at 7.2 kilometers. This is with the advanced firing training and the range upgrade. So, in terms of anti air DPS, if you go manual anti air on this ship, you could actually do quite a lot of anti-air damage but I wouldn't recommend it because the France has less dual purpose AA DPS so it's not as good and the France has more of the other I guess the auto cannons or whatever you'd call them I don't know I'm not actually sure so don't quote me on that the other anti-air DPS basically 5.1 kilometer 145 DPS and 61 at 2.9 so the other DPS on the Alsace isn't actually that great oh in terms of secondaries, you can absolutely go a secondary build. Your base range is 7 kilometers, so you can get it up to 10.6 if you go for the full secondary build with secondary upgrade range and secondary and manual secondaries in the advanced firing training. Well, I suppose you don't need manual secondaries for the range anyway. Maneuverability wise, she is slightly faster than the France at 32 knots, plus she gets the usual 8% speed boost, 910 meter turning circle, and 16.6 .6 second rudder shift. Uh, concealment wise 12.6 kilometer concealment makes her a fairly stealthy battleship actually one of the stealthier tier 9 battleships i believe not the stealthiest though but one of them 11.7 kilometer air detectability doesn't matter because planes can't see beyond 11 kilometers let's take a look at the armor now she is the usual of 32 millimeters all over with a huge superstructure a much bigger superstructure than the richelieu if you notice which means that she is slightly more vulnerable to the things like destroyers, but she is, has still the same vulnerability to cruisers as the France and Richelieu and well, pretty much all the other French battleships. That, you know, she has 32mm of deck armor pretty much everywhere, bow and aft as well, and you know, the side plates are also 32mm. The uh, AP protection on this ship is pretty much the same as, or pretty similar to the France, with I believe slightly lower amounts. Armor belt is 350 millimeters, front is uh, 370 on the citadel. You know, it's the usual, and she still gets that spaced armor and the turtle back on it for 50 millimeters. And the citadel itself is 50 millimeters all across, so it's actually, I think, slightly better than the France, but very slightly. And the citadel sits slightly above the waterline, just like all the other French battleships. But honestly, I didn't really feel like my Citadel was pretty much ever at risk of being penetrated hard. But yeah, armor-wise, again, not great AP protection in terms of normal penetration damage, but against Citadels, the AP protection is good. But she has a weakness of HE as usual on the French battleships. I, th I really like this ship. This was, at first, this was my favorite French battleship in this line. However, I think the France is, sl is slowly taking that spot from her. But I still like her a lot. 12 guns at tier 9? Absolutely yes. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support for Cruiser Pensacola, and I hope I'll see you guys next time.